So why shouldn't you create, alter, and drop triggers programmatically, like just have it happen automatically behind the scenes based in something in your app code? In order to show it, I'm gonna go through and create or alter triggers. I'm gonna do this a few times on the votes table just to show that I can create triggers as often as I want as long as the table isn't under contention. It happens really quickly and easily. Also, I can run a select query as often as I want. Runs very quickly, works beautifully. But now as soon as I start to merge these things together happening at the same time that I'm also running a query that takes locks out, tougher things start to happen. For example, over on the far left, I'm going to go run an ugly select query that takes some time to execute. Now while that's happening, I can go run my select top one star and that executes really quickly. Watch what happens when I start to create or alter the trigger. That's blocked. And now my select top one is also blocked even though it uses no lock. The reason why is that the middle query, in order for him to run, he needs a schema stability lock. He needs to make sure that nothing is changing about the table, but he can't get it as long as over on the far left hand side, that query is still running because by default in SQL Server with pessimistic concurrency, readers and writers can block each other. Now I can start to work around this by changing my isolation level, for example, but that's not going to change the fact that that trigger needed an exclusive lock to change the structure of the table. Adding, altering, or dropping a trigger, all of those are considered changing the structure of the table. So you'll notice that when the one on the far left finally finished, the rest of them kind of cascaded in as all being done. Each of these could run instantaneously before, but whenever another query is running that takes out locks, you run into this cascading blocking scenario. So over here on the left again, I'm gonna start my select count distinct that takes a while, then I'm gonna do the trigger, then I'm gonna do my select top one with no lock. This is the scenario that you run into when you're trying to alter triggers on a live table, create, alter, or drop triggers. Queries that used to be able to dart in and out without getting locks no longer can. Watch what happens if I stop the creation of that trigger, then I can run my select top one star with no lock as often as I want, and it works just fine. But once you start adding or dropping triggers, all of a sudden you, whoops, you run into this cascading blocking scenario where queries that used to finish instantaneously are now blocked by the schema stability lock requirements of that adding or dropping a trigger. Now you and I might say that changing a trigger isn't really changing the structure of a table. But to some extent it is because you're changing what happens when people do inserts, updates, and deletes against it. And you wouldn't want a trigger going in that suddenly has unpredicted results based on the inserts, updates, and deletes that were happening at the time.